Lincoln College is, is very lucky to have had uh, about four federation style buildings that are on the campus. Each of those buildings is steeped with history, they're all over 100 years old uh, and each tells a story. We work very hard to make sure that those buildings are maintained and maintained well so that the students can enjoy living in such a close proximity to North Adelaide and Adelaide. Um, obviously those sort of buildings attract a lot of gravitas and we're very lucky to have them. So Lincoln was created in 1952 by the Reverend Arthur Hambly as a representative of the Methodist Church wanting to make sure that there was a safe place in Adelaide for young Methodist countrymen to come to the city and study. The Methodist Church became folded into the Uniting Church over the years and the Uniting Church is a little bit more relaxed about um, connecting to faith than I think the Methodists were. But having said that, I think the ultimate aim of Perliteris Ad Fetum, which is learning to connect more deeply with what makes you a better person, is still a really central value of Lincoln College today. So I think the other day I counted up on our calendar I think there's somewhere between 40 and 50 events that we run throughout the whole year. So there's quite a range there of different things. So like we run pub nights and pub crawls. So it's really just things that get people out and talking to each other really. Well, I've met a number of the previous masters and principals. Um, so I can tell you from my recollections there. Um, the first master, as I mentioned, was Reverend Hamley. I didn't meet him. Um, he unfortunately passed away a long time before I was associated with the college. He actually died in this office while he was in the middle of a workday. So um, sometimes when like a, you know, I'm in the middle of my workday and a, a cupboard will swing open or some papers will fall to the floor, I'll be like, it's okay, Reverend Hamley. I'm, I'm taking good care of the college. Following Reverend Hambly was the Reverend John Whitehead. Uh, he lived here with his wife, Irvin Whitehead, during the period of time in the college when women were first admitted into the college. Following that was the Reverend Dr. Jeffrey Scott, and he was a great friend to the Singaporean and Malaysian students that made up a huge part of the college community during his era. Following him was Reverend Peter Gunn, um, and he was a really lovely man. He actually deformalised Lincoln College significantly. So prior to his tenure, uh, every dinner, residents would have to put on their gowns and eat in their formal academic gowns. And he said, look, it's the 1990s. Nobody wants to wear academic gowns to dinner anymore. Let's just be a bit more relaxed. Um, and he was actually in charge of the college when the current head, Dr. Paul Tosh, came to work here as the senior RA. So um, I know Paul has really fond memories of his time working with Peter Gunn. Uh, I'm very lucky to have had Lincoln in my life. In that time, I made some very special friends. I met my wife here, uh, and who subsequently went on to have great careers and now have returned. The two big changes that I can think of is that when the college was founded in 1952, because it was founded by Methodists, it was an alcohol-free college, and it was a men-only college. Um, and it was a lot smaller, so just this one building that we're in had the master, the master's family, and 20 young men all living together. Um, over time the college has expanded a lot. Instead of 20 residents, we now have rooms that can take up to 200 residents. I think the Lincoln of today is a really friendly, accepting and diverse community. Um, I hope that it's a place where people come and feel that they can be the person that they really are inside. They don't have to hide any parts of themselves or change who they are to fit in. There is something called the New Resident Dance. So every year they choose a song and they make up a dance to it for that year's incoming residents to learn and they do it basically whenever there's a time you can be dancing. So you put the song on and then everyone just does the exact same dance and in the middle of the song yell a name of a legacy resident which is basically someone who's had an older sibling come through. What do you think separates Lincoln from other colleges? What do you think separates Lincoln from the other colleges? What do you think separates Lincoln with other colleges? I, I would say the culture. I think there's definitely just a really wholesome, nice, friendly vibe that we have going here. I think Lincoln is the friendliest of the colleges. Um, I know that we're still the most kind of diverse college in terms of representation of international residents in the college. I reckon everyone's just really friendly and nice to each other and you get to meet a lot of different people from a lot of different backgrounds that... At the heart of Lincoln College is the ethos of 
egalitarian access to university. So that's equal access to university. So we understand what it's like to be first your family to university, perhaps first even in your town to be university. And you take that thought and you bring in love and respect for all nationalities, all um, denominations, all religions, and allow it to mix and you get magic. And Lincoln knows that, it always has, always will. And it does make it a very special and magical place to work. I think, the biggest difference now is students need to work harder. They, there's a lot more pressure on a modern student than we had um, to go to work, have, have a, a side hustle while actually studying at university. But the, the overall spirit of the college is the same. It's about providing a place that students can live and thrive and learn about university and all the possibilities in life and that is at Lincoln's core and always will be.